Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today, Ross Marcogiani, with another great conversation at Rebelwell.com. Today we're going to be talking about three various types of anemias. We talk about our iron anemia, B12 anemia, and B6 anemia. We'll be talking about uh, populations that are at risk. We'll be going over clinical presentations or clinical findings. We'll also be go going over what's called red blood cell indices. And then we'll discuss how we take care of these anemias. So let's dive in. First, we have our iron deficiency anemia. This is going to be one of our more common anemias. And populations that are at risk are going to be our pregnant women because we're giving our iron, they're giving their iron to their fetus. Women who have excessive menstrues or menstruation or just um, menstruating women as a whole because we're losing our iron through our blood. And as we know, iron is a important component of our blood, of the blood. Uh, then infants and toddlers are gonna be at risk that aren't receiving breast milk. Breast milk is a great source of iron or if they're taking excessive um, exogenous milk products, that's going to also interfere with iron as well. And then um, vegans, because we don't, they're not taking in meat, and as we know, uh, meat is very high in iron and other important minerals. And then people with acohydria. Acohydria is gonna be a lack of stomach acid. And the stomach acid is crucial from uh, converting the storage form of ferric iron to ferrous iron, which is the more usable iron. So our clinical findings that will present with iron anemia are going to be pica, which is the craving of dirt or other starches, um, the pagophagia, which is going to be craving of ice, chelonychia, which is going to be, um, you'll see concavities in the fingernail beds or basically divots in the nail beds, and then chelosis, which will be uh, cracking around the lips. And then red blood cell indices. So this is basically how we differentiate the multiple or various different types of anemias. So red blood cell indices look at the size and color of the red blood cell. With iron defici deficiency anemia, the red blood cell indice is microcytic hypochromic, meaning that the microcytic, that the red blood cell is too small, and hypochromic, meaning that the red blood cell isn't red enough. There's too much pallor in it. And we can measure this. How we do this is we use um, a CBC, a complete blood cell count and differential, and we'll look at what's called MCV, mean corpuscular volume. And that's gonna look at the size of the red blood cell. If we see that, that that's below 80, we can call it microcytic. And then we'll look at for the size of the red blood cell, we'll look at what's called MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. And that's going to tell us if we see that it's below 32, see if it's below 32, that it's going to be um, not red enough. There's gonna to be too much pallor. And then how we treat this iron anemia is we're going to use 300 milligrams of ferrous sulfate three times a day. We wanna take that about one hour before we have a meal. And we wanna probably take it with a vitamin C because it helps the absorption of, of iron. And then if we have um, heavy milk consumers, we want to uh, limit one pint of milk per day. Now we'll head over to our B12 and B6 anemia. So these are going to be very similar in symptoms. Um, there's going to be a little bit of different variations that I'm going to tell you that's going to be important to know. So when we're first talking about our B12 anemia, cyanocobalamin, this gets absorbed in the terminal ileum and um, parietal cells and intrinsic factor is crucial in the absorption of this anemia. When B12, when we take in B12, it gets stored in the liver and it can be absorbed and stay and be stored in that liver for up to three to five years. So we wanna be careful when um, we're diagnosing and prescribing B12. With B6 anemia, this gets absorbed in the duodenum and the, the uh, jejunum. And this doesn't get stored quite as long in the liver for a couple months, so just to be aware of that as well. And it doesn't really have much of an influence with um, the parietal cells and intrinsic factors. So really important with B12, 
because we can measure uh, parietal cell antibodies and intrinsic uh, antibodies as well to see if those are elevated to also indicate that we have B12 anemia. So populations at risk. So people that have GI issues or GI distress that aren't able to absorb our B12 or B6 in the small intestine, um, if we have dysfunction going on, they're not going to be able to absorb it and there's going to be a deficiency in it as well. And then also vegans, again, because these are incredibly high source in um, meat and if they're not just not taking in the meat, you're not going to be getting the source unless you're, you're aware of it and you're a smart vegan and that you're t already supplementing, which is awesome. Some clinical findings. These will be similar, but we'll have one big difference that you need to key in on. So they'll typically have what's called like bilirubinemia, which is gonna start seeing like yellowing of the skin or possibly in the eyes. The spleen starts to destroy the red blood cells and they turn into this um, yellowing coloring and dis, uh, displayed through the skin. Also we'll have what's called glossitis which is like a beefy red tongue, if you were to look at the tongue. And then we'll also start to have a lot of diarrhea and weight loss with these anemias as well. But the one thing that differentiates them between the two is with B12, we'll have neurological findings. So you'll start to get tingling or desensitized hands and feet and also have some neurological deficiencies, not being able to move as well. So that's really important that you're aware of that. How we can diagnose between the two because they're so similar is we can look at in our CBC, our serum B12. If that's less than a thousand, then we know we have B12 anemia. If we look at our serum folic acid and that's less than five, then we know we have a B6 anemia. How we're gonna treat this. For B12 anemia, we'll do injections, a thousand microgram injection of B12. We'll do that one, one per day for the first week, then the next month we'll do it once a week and then one time per month after that. For our B6, we're gonna do one milligram of methylfolate a day, making sure we're taking methylfolate. This is going to be our bio-identical form and, and just be able to absorb it better. If we're taking folic acid, this is going to be more of the synthetic form and we do not want to be taking that. We're just not going to absorb it and get the best bang for our buck there. One big point here that we want to distinguish. If we can't differentiate between the two and we just start taking methylfolate, this can kind of lead you down a slippery slope because it can improve our lab findings. You may start feeling a little bit better but what it's going to do, it's going to make our neurological findings even worse if you have B12 anemia. So you really need to make sure we figure out if you, you, know, you, know, you really think you're anemic and it is one of the B vitamins, you have to distinguish between the two or else we could make that B12 and the neurological findings worse. I hope you found this helpful today. I really appreciate you spending your time. And like I always say, if you can, if you know anyone that can benefit from this, please share this with them. Because like I always say, we're in this together to become healthier and happier and make the world a better place. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.